Hello, this is Math 2270 coming to you from the College of DuPage during the summer of 2020, and this is the first continuation of the lecture entitled Qualitative and Numerical Approaches Done. An ordinary differential equation in which the independent variable does not appear explicitly is said to be autonomous. So if the symbol x denotes the independent variable, then an autonomous first order differential equation can be written as uh, f of just y and y prime is equal to zero or and this is a different f uh, but if you solve for dy dx it's dy dx is equal to f of y it only depends on y and we were looking at a couple of those before now they're useful because many uh, differential equations encountered in applications do not change over time are autonomous uh, we've seen a bunch of these. This was the very first differential equation we solved on day one. This was uh, to age the um, cave painting. Uh, this is how a flu virus spreads. That's an example in your textbook. This is Newton's law of cooling, another example in your textbook. And this was the mixing problem that we talked a lot about. So you see um, um, that these are all autonomous differential equations. Now, the zeros then of the right-hand side function are of special importance. Sometimes they're called critical points when f of c is equal to zero. Other times they're called equilibrium or stationary points. Uh, but if c is a critical point, then y equals c is a constant solution of autonomous differential equations. I talked about these early on in the course as being lost solutions or singular solutions in some instances. Uh, a constant solution y of x equals c is called an equilibrium solution and equilibria are the only constant solutions of an autonomous differential equation. Let's consider uh, this example. This is dp dt is equal to p times a minus bp and you notice there's no t uh, over here explicitly so that means that this is autonomous so we can start thinking about what does this rate of change really mean and we can say when is this equal to zero well this is equal to zero when p is equal to zero or when p is equal to a over b so those are the two zeros that happen so we can analyze what happens by the sine of f of p, and f of p is going to be this derivative over here. So from minus infinity to zero, the sign of f of p is minus. That means that the function itself is decreasing because its derivative is, decrease, is negative, and that means it points downward. And in my little drawing over here, I wrote zero and a over v, and so I've talked about this part of it right here. It's pointing downward because it's decreasing. Now from 0 to a over b, if you look up here, from 0 to a over b, both of those are um, positive. That means the sign of the derivative, f of p, is plus. That means p itself is increasing and it points upward. So you see from 0 to a over b, it's pointing upward. And then last, from a over b to infinity, again, it is going to be um, f of p, which is the derivative, is going to be um, minus. That means the function is decreasing, and it points down. So uh, these are called a one-dimensional phase portrait, or phase portrait of this differential equation. And the vertical line is called a phase line. And you notice the behavior is different in those different quadrants, or at least can be. Let's look at an example of this. Uh, here, what I plotted was, or I did the uh, direction field for dy dx is equal to uh, y times 3 minus 4y. Now, this is just like what we were doing on the other side, except I had to pick what a and b were so I could actually plot it. So I took a to be uh, 3 and b to be 4. And you see at 3 fourths, which is what this line is here, there's some action going on. And so as x gets uh, bigger and bigger, um, or it could have been t, what happens is I am attracted there. Uh, here, what is happening is I'm, uh, so I'm decreasing up here. I'm increasing here. 
and uh, the other zero happens at uh, zero which is here and you see as uh, uh, the uh, independent variable gets bigger it goes down it is decreasing so you see this uh, does work the way it's supposed to and we do have terminology for this these are called attractors and repellers there's a nice similar uh, summary over here so if C is a critical point here it's called an attractor uh, because uh, you see above it, it's going to be converging down to it, and below it, it is uh, converging up to it. So that is attracting things like it, from a physics standpoint. This is called a repeller because uh, if you're above it, it repels up, and if you blow it, it pushes you down. And so um, that is called a repeller. And here you have a mix. And so those are called semi-stable because one way it's uh, being repelled and the other way it's being attracted. And uh, there's different names for these. People talk about things being stable and unstable and so on and so forth. I'm not going to test you on all this terminology, but I am going to test you somehow on this qualitative business. Uh, and here, let's just go back to that one we were talking about before. I uh, actually did this with uh, A equal 3 and B equal 4, and this is the example that we talked about before, and you see it behaves in that way. Uh, notice that here is very interesting. This is our logistics curve. Things start slow, really ramp up, and then they uh, level out. This is the way epidemics happen. This is the way wars happen. This is the way software developments happen. Uh, let's look at another example. Let's look at dy dx is equal to y minus 1 whole squared. Again, I'm still using win plot for this. And I plotted uh, this. This has uh, roots at 1. It's a double root at 1. So at 1, things are happening. And you can see that here for this one, I am being uh, repelled up here and I'm being attracted down here. So that means this is what we call semi stable. Uh, we can also learn other things. Uh, here's a learning we can get from this. If uh, y of x is a solution to an autonomous differential equation, dy dx equal f of y, then if I talk about a new function, y1, and I just shift it right by k units, that's also a solution because, look, the slope is the same. Um, uh, next, we're going to talk about numerical solutions. That's all I plan to